we are with uh, our friend, Jaime, and Gizem today for the ABP Community Talks 2022.7. So thank you for attending to the seventh episode of 2022's ABP Community Talks. In today's agenda, we will talk about the ABP community news. I will uh, give you the overall um, ABP community news. And then we will see Musa and Gizam go in depth about UI testing with Playwright. And then Heidi will share a preview of what is coming with ABP version 7.0. And finally, we will have questions and answers. And during this session, people who ask questions will have three dot ultimate giveaways. So I'd like to thank to Jack Brains for sponsoring today's ABP community talks and making it possible for us to um, give away three free annual dot ultimate subscription. To give you a little preview about the dot ultimate, it includes resharper rider, resharper C, dot trace, dot memory, dot cover, and dot peak. So it's a toolkit by JetBrains. Thank you all for listening to me. I'm fine, we are with you. Okay, thank you, Vigya, for the introduction part. I am coming into stream. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a long time since I have not been here, so uh, welcome to all the, all the audience. Uh, I know you are all expecting ABP 7.0, but now we came to the end for uh, 6.0 stable version, and uh, we have now ABP 6.0 RC5 release, and next week, the stable release will be published, so everyone will be using the stable one. And I'm going to show you some of the uh, community articles and what they are about. First of all, um, Don Botwell uh, has written an article about configuring multiple DB contacts in an ABP project. So if you want to work with more than one database, then this article shows you how to configure multiple DB contacts in your ABP solution. So you will take the advantage of multi-database architecture. You can check out his blog post from his website, and also you can access the link from uh, ABP community website. And next, Kirti Kulkarni uh, wrote an article about deploying ABP Angular application to Azure and also uh, she explained how to integrate to Azure App Insights. In this document, she is explaining deploying phase of ABP commercial Angular application and also the backend to Azure Cloud Services. Uh, and you know Azure App Insights is an application performance management for web applications and helps to monitor your website uh, performance. This article shows you how to integrate your ABP project to Azure App Insights. It's a very detailed uh, article. You can see all the screenshots and all the required steps here. And next we are coming to the uh, logging article. Uh, again, Don Botwell, uh, thanks to him. And he wrote an article about logging to Datadoc from ABP Framework. ABP users, maybe some of you know, uh, Serilog to write internal logs, which gives us a wide range of integrations for aggregating our logs. Datadoc is a monitoring and analytics tool that can be used to determine performance metrics, as well as event monitoring for infra infrastructure and cloud services. And this article explains how to send logs of ABP application to Datadoc and some useful information about how to leverage those logs inside the Datadoc tool. And next, we can come to Zevis 
um, he wrote an article about pre-rendering your Blazor WebAssembly application. As you know, when users visit your Blazor WebAssembly application for the first time, the browser downloads some .NET runtimes and your website's assets. And we face delays for the first visits. And even after the next visits, we see loading indicators, which sometimes is annoying. In this case, pre-rendering rescues us uh, and it will be all rendered on the server side. It improves the scores in Chromium Lighthouse. And also it's very successful in terms of, uh, in terms of search engine optimization rankings. In this article, he demonstrates how to pre-render your Blazor WebAssembly application on the server. And next, Malik Masis is uh, from ABP team. He wrote an article about using mass transit via eShop on ABP. As you know, eShop on ABP is a reference microservice solution like Microsoft's eShop on container. It's created by the ABP team. It's built on top of ABP framework and runs on Kubernetes. You can also uh, check its website from this link. It's open source here. Um, and mass transit is a lightweight open source enterprise service bus library for .NET. It helps developers route messages over RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus, uh, Amazon SQS, ActiveMQ. It also supports multicast, versioning, encryption, sagas, retries, transactions, and distributed systems. In this article, Malik is explaining how to use RabbitMQ on eShop on ABP project. So you can understand uh, uh, how to write it in your, uh, how to move it in your uh, project. Next, Malik has another article about consuming HTTP APIs from a .NET client using ABP's client proxy system. As you know, ABP can dynamically create C-sharp API client proxies as REST APIs. And also it creates C-sharp API client proxy code to call your remote services. In this way, you don't need to deal with HTTP client and other low level details to consume remote services. In this article, he explains how to consume HTTP APIs from a .NET application using ABP's dynamic and static client-side proxy system. You can check out his blog post from here. And Halil Ibrahim Kalkan, the lead developer of ABP framework, he wrote an article with the, about using gRPC with the ABP framework. Uh, it's very popular nowadays. Many times I hear from developers uh, asking me how to integrate gRPC and uh, integration with ABP framework. Uh, as we know, there are two primary models for API design, RPC and REST. And gRPC is a technology for implementing RPC APIs that uses HTTP 2.0 as its underlying transport protocol. By different evaluations, gRPC offers up, up to 10 times faster performance and API security than the classical REST JSON communication as it uses protobuf and HTTP2. In this article, Halil shows how to create a gRPC service and consume it from a console client application with the ABP framework. And there is next part of this article. It's consuming gRPC services from Blazor WebAssembly application using gRPC web. Um, this article is based on Microsoft's gRPC with the a, uh, gRPC web in ASP.NET Core. Let me open this. This one. This is based on code first gRPC services and clients with .NET. So um, all these links are here in commercial site, community site of ABP IO website. You can go here and from the post link, you can access all the uh, valuable articles here. So uh, that's all from my side. These are updated ABP news from the community.
Next, I think Gizem and uh, Musa will show you how to make UI test. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Ipar, for going in that with the latest thing to come into news. Right now, Gizam will introduce Playwright and its advantages, disadvantages, and then we will see Musa uh, going more in depth with a demo. And we are with you, Gizam. Thank you, Vika. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Gizem. I have been working as a software test engineer at Volosoft for about uh, one year. I perform UI tests for one of uh, Volosoft products. Uh, in this session, uh, I will talk about Playwright, which is one of the automation tools uh, and some of its advantages. Uh, the overall purpose uh, of uh, automation testing is to increase testing efficiency and improve software quality. Uh, when, the, uh, when the system is checked uh, manually, uh, the risk of errors is greater and with automation. Uh, the system can uh, perform a check is uh, a faster time frame. We also add some bug uh, fixes or uh, new features to our Volosoft products every day. Uh, and uh, we need to con constantly uh, run and uh, report the same test plan in order to ensure any impact of these uh, features in the application. Uh, this result in a great effort. Uh, therefore, uh, it is often uh, better to software uh, efficient, uh, efficiently and effectively using automation testing. Uh, uh, this is very, uh, very advantageous uh, in terms of cost, uh, resources, and time. Uh, using a test automation tool, uh, it is uh, possible to save any test plan, and uh, replay is uh, admit, uh, admitted uh, thus by running or automatic uh, test after each release. Uh, we boot prevent time uh, lost uh, and obtain the test reports in a fast and error-free manner. Uh, we uh, choose Playwright to test uh, our test scenarios automatically, and you will understand why when we talk about Playwright, it uh, has many advantages. Uh, so let's uh, uh, get started. Um, what is Playwright? Uh, uh, it's a, a Node.js library used to automate a uh, web browser. Uh, Playwright is a free and open source framework uh, for web automation testing. Uh, it was created by Microsoft uh, and uh, can be used to automate tests in web browser application. Uh, when I say web browser, uh, it can be a web browser or mobile browser. We can also run API tests with Playwright. Uh, if uh, I talk about the supported languages, uh, it supports the most popular languages, uh, TypeScript, JavaScript, C Sharp, uh, and uh, Java and Python. Uh, you can create your test uh, with all these languages. Uh, also, uh, it supports all popular browsers. It supports all Chromium-based uh, browser, WebKit browser, and uh, Firefox. Uh, Chromium is the web browser engine uh, behind uh, Google Chrome, um, uh, behind uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, and Opera, and many more. Uh, and uh, under WebKit, we have Safari, uh, we have uh, all MacOS and iOS browser. And uh, under Firefox, uh, we have all Firefox uh, versions. Um, it's also CI/CD supports. Uh, so if you want to use any CI/CD tools, uh, you can create your own GitHub action and uh, run them automatically. And you can also use any container platform like Docker. Yes. Um, Playwright has uh, access to all native APIs, all uh, supported browser. Yes, uh, Playwright has other advantages as well. Uh, we can uh, run parallel tests. Uh, we can uh, run our tests in different browser at the same time with parallel tests. Uh, 
uh, it can automatically download the browser uh, it needs. Uh, we can record screenshot and uh, videos or uh, test execution. Uh, playwright uh, run test very quickly and you will see this when we run our test case. Uh, it can also perform a uh, test operation without opening the browser. So you can make the test run even faster. Uh, and uh, for more advantages, uh, we will talk about the throughout the session. Uh, that's all I am going to say for now. I leave more to Musa. Thank you. Thank you, Gizem. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Musa. I have been working in Molosov for more than three years. I mainly work in ASP.NET boilerplate and ASP.NET Zero projects. And today I will start from stretch and uh, learn how to use Playwright. Then we will see how we implement it in Molosoft. And today I am going to use TypeScript version of it. And it also supports C Sharp and uh, Python and some other languages. And we are going to use TypeScript version uh, today. So you are going to need Node.js and I prefer to use VS Code Editor. Uh, all right, uh, let's start with initializing a project and see how easy it is. We are going to go uh, to the an empty folder and we are going to type just npm init delay right we are going to use the latest one so it's going to ask us which version we are we are going to use we are going to use we are, type, we are going to use typescript and the defaults so it is created and the empty uh, test has two example tests and which one okay let's go with the, uh, with that one and run the tests and see what's going on mpx playwright Musa, can you in increase your font size, please? Okay. Is it better? Yeah, better. Maybe well, a little bit more. That, that's better. Okay. So, the tests are run, but we didn't see anything. That's because of the headless mode of the Playwright. Playwright has a background mode, which uh, runs all the tests is in background. Uh, it's very useful for the CI CD uh, because you can run tests in background and you can just get the results. So let's close it and check it again. We are going to add headless calls. And we are going to run the tests again. So as you see, three windows opened and all the tests passed. Now we can see the test results with typing APX Playwright test report, show report. And as you see here, the same uh, test is uh, run and did run uh, in three browser, which is Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. As Gizem said, uh, Playwright supports a lot of browsers. And you can see the configurations. It's, uh, they are located in Playwright config.ts. And we opened Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. And you can also use mobile version of them. And you can also use Microsoft Edge. So now let's examine the example test and see how it works. All right. And the page page 
Uh, every test has page field which returns a uh, current opponent page. You can use it to access the current page. So, for example, we use that page, uh, page that go to to locate the player at that dev. So, assertions, assertions. Uh, player that uses tests uh, uses expects library to test assertions, uh, which also provides uh, more measures like to equal, to continue, to match, to be and more and the locators locators are a way to find element on the dom uh, you can use it to get element on the dom and you can manipulate dom with with it it also has auto waiting and auto retry ability so if it is not ready in the ui it waits automatically for it to be ready it also has a timeout and so you can use it easily to uh, get items on the UI. Let's see how it works. Uh, you can type page.locator and you will need to type the selectors. I'm going to uh, tell what kind of selectors you can use. Let's skip it right now. And after you get your element, you can basically uh, do any type, any kind of things on it. For example, you can hover it, you can click it, you can double click it, or you can check if your element has something or not. For example, it checks if it has uh, that href attributed, or you can get uh, your input using locator and then fill it with any value that you want, or you can check that filter. So selectors, uh, selectors are strings that are used to create locators by using different kinds of identifiers. For example, let's say we are going to try to click that button, that login button. Uh, you can use CSS select, uh, for, sorry, you can use text selector uh, to click that button. It uh, finds item by its, its text. For example, you can use page that locator takes a query, login, and then you can do whatever you want. You can use any kind of CSS selector. Uh, you can use ID, you can use class, or uh, you can select them by their attributed attributes. Or you can use expert selectors, or you can combine them and use uh, all of them in one query. For example, it uh, filters them by their class, and in that class, it uses expat, and then it clicks by its text. So, the methods. Uh, as you see, we have locator to get items uh, from DOM, and then after we get items from DOM, and uh, we can use a lot of methods to manipulate them. For example, we can use click method, we can use double click or hover or etc. Now let's create new test and see what we learn by logging a ABP application. So we are going to go to the uh, takes new file and login that take that yes sorry and copy that and pass it to here so first of all we are going to log into abp.io I'm going to click that button and then wait for the redirection. And then fill the input and click the login button. So let's examine how we can select the items. For examples, uh, for example, we can check that item we can click that item by it is class. It has login button for desktop. 
and we have no desktop login button it's unique and then we can check these inputs by their id and click that login button as we already see so i'm not going to write it from stretch i already have it let's see how i did it so we can go to the avp.ao uh, by typing a uh, page that go to and then we are going to click the button by it is class then we are going to wait for the page we will expect page uh, to start with that url then after uh, url is uh, it's redirected, redirected we are going to go to the we are going to fill them and click the login button and we will expect to go back to the app.io and then we are going to check if the cookie is set correctly so let's go to the dead test and run it and see results Okay. So, before that, I just want to. Uh, we don't need to wait for all browsers. We can just use one and headless mode. It's already configured. Clicks to that button, fills the input. Yeah. So as we see, it goes to the app.ao and redirects to the account login and so on. So since it works very fast, we are not able to see how things happened. You can use territory debug attribute and it's going to run it with inspector. Uh, with using that inspector, we can see what's going on. So it's going to go to the page. And as you see here, it show, shows us uh, the locator. It's going to uh, select that item by that locator and we are going to click that then it expects to go to that url and as you see here it's going to fill here fill that and fill that and click to that so now it is login And login successfully, but it has some problem with cookies. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I know actually because it's interesting case. What we have migrated to OpenID Dict, and <laughs> there is no identity server cookie now in our ABPIO website. Yeah. <laughs> we have so, just uh, upgraded our websites to OpenID Dict from identity server. So your tests. Uh, are old. That's why it's not working. Okay. Do you know? Okay, but it's not okay. so important. You can just uh, check another cookie or uh, check okay. your, if you, if your username is shown on top of the page. Yes. Yes. Anyway. You're right. We can also check if we are logged and we have that username here. So we log in. Uh, we can also check if uh so we check should login test we 
go to the page and try to login. Then we can also check uh, should not login with email password or any kind of test you need. For example, it's it has to be something like that. Go to the ABPAO click it button and go to the account and fill it with invalid password and then try to log in. And we will expect that uh, it stays in the current page and gives us another error message. And we don't expect the cookies. So uh, since there we all, always use an expects library to check the uh, station in the tests, uh, but we can also use the signatures. Uh, Playwright has built-in signatures and signature system. You can use them and take a signature uh, from UI and compare them with the previous one. For example, uh, after we log in the page, we can take a signature and check initial page render. Then we try to fill inputs and click to the login button and we will expect there will be an invalid username and password error and then we will get another signature then it is going to be login that invalid username password or another name that you want and we can uh, check uh, that png with previous one and see uh, if there is something wrong in the in this test So, and we can also run that test. As you see, it does the same things, but now we have two screenshot, which is taken right now. The first one is render initial page, and second one is an email username or password error. So, and what we can do next? Uh, let me tell you the method that we use in our projects. Uh, we use pixel match library. Uh, that's a library that uh, checks two different pictures and uh, and shows us the differences uh, from uh, these pictures. Uh, for example, we are we have two uh, types. Uh, we we have two different uh pictures which is taken uh, in different times and we give it give them to pixel mesh library and then uh, we check them uh, after that uh, if there is a difference we produce a new picture which is only draws uh, around the different parts uh, this allow us to clearly see the difference with the current signature and the previous one uh, we also connect this process to GitHub Actions. Uh, when we trigger that action, it runs all the tests and opens a PR that contain uh, all the differences. And in this way, we can easily understand whether the code was uh, right, uh, broke down anything or, uh, or not. So actually here, uh, it is the quick investigation of the playwright. And we are on you, Gizem. Musa, I think I can show you some real case scenario. Um, yes. This is, this is one of the UI test results that uh, we are running internally in our ABP projects uh, unit test. Here you can see uh, Volo agent is our uh, user that makes this uh, automatic pull request. And as you see, it navigates all the screens and uh, finds the uh, differences. If there is a pixel difference, it also shows there as a marked red marked uh, circle. And if uh, there is, you can also specify the tolerance of this 
difference. Like we can see this pull request. This is the first one, like the before, this is the after state. So it says there are, there is missing the um, logo section. And also here, the text is, as you see, not visible. So you can uh, check out what's going on on the UI test after the automation completes. You don't need to wait for it. You can put it on GitHub. Also, there was a question about uh, GitHub uh, actions. There is this tool that runs Playwright tests and GitHub action. You can check this out. And um, Musa, I would like to ask you if this is the only way to write GitHub uh, the, the tests in TypeScript. Do are there any other uh, languages that we can use for uh, this UI testing in Playwright? Yeah, it supports multiple languages, and uh, you can use C sharp, you can use Python, I think, and also Java might be. Yeah, it supports yeah, multiple languages. We are all .NET developers, so uh, there is C sharp support. It's very good, and also we know that it's open source and backed by the Microsoft. And yes. as far as I know, it's faster than Selenium, uh, and has capabilities that Selenium does. So it looks like fairly new to the automation scene, but as we are from .NET stack, this is a, a very easy way to write uh, UI tests as a simple developer. Yes, it is a really easy and quick to start. Yeah. Uh, who is the next? Yeah, you are muted. The next is Gizam. We will uh, hear from Gizam about the code gen and inspector. Gizam, we are with you. Thank you, Um Hello again, everyone. Uh, in this uh, part of the session, we have a tool called uh, CodeGen. I will talk about it. Uh, we will see how we can save our tests uh, without write, uh, writing code uh, with Playwright CodeGen. Uh, we can use CodeGen to automatically uh, generate and save our test scripts. Uh, this will be very easy and uh, interesting. Uh, so let's start by running CodeGen. Uh, when we start CodeGen, uh, two windows will open. Uh, uh, the first window will be browser window. Uh, the uh, second window will be Playwright Inspector window. Uh, let's go my VS Code uh, and uh, open the terminal. Uh, we say um, npx. Playwright code gen, uh, and we want uh, we can add the URL that we will test from now on. Uh, but uh, for now, let's run uh, it like uh, this. Uh, I click enter. Uh, we see browser and uh, inspector windows open. Uh, we uh, can enter the URL uh, that we will test in the browser window. I will test uh, on the ADP IL website. Um, paste. Yes. Uh, when we look at our inspector window, we see that auto, uh, automatically generates the code uh, necessary to reach URL. Uh, let's continue, login, click. Uh, wherever uh, uh, I move uh, my mouse uh, pointer, we see that uh, it finds the cursor there and highlights. Uh, now uh, I will enter the uh, username and uh, password information. And uh, login click. It's super simple. Uh, that it writes automatically. Yet you don't need to remember any code. Yes. 
so uh, you can see that uh, login is uh, done uh, and all the actions are recorded. Uh, we also uh, uh, see that it uh, added uh, the code uh, commands. Um, I am going to uh, log out and uh, uh, recording and recording. Yes, uh, we see that uh, all the operations we are uh, very easily generated automatically with just a few clicks and data entry. Um, in here, uh, we see a drop down menu. Uh, we can uh, choose uh, other languages uh, it supports uh, Java or Python or uh, C sharp. Uh, Okay, uh, let me copy all uh, the generated and pass VS code. Yes, so um, let's go, uh, go to terminal uh, and uh, try to run this code. We save it and see the result. Uh, uh, code gen is still uh, running uh, and uh, stop. Yes, uh, I will run uh, the test now. Uh, I will say uh, npx playwright uh, test and uh, test name. Uh, uh, okay, enter click. We write the file name, I think. Uh, playwright test abpio. Okay. Yes, uh, we see uh, that our test is running. Wow. Yes, uh, cool. it finished. It finished uh, the test uh, and it uh, was fast. Uh, this much. Uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you for listening to me. This is the best, uh, best I... part of this best part of this show. Um, I think everybody can easily write their UI tests with this tool without knowing any internals of playwright. Yes, you don't need to know how to code. You can just use CodeGen and it generates all the codes. Sometimes you may need to uh, maybe That's upgrade nice. some yeah. uh, selectors, but it works. But overall, it's very good and uh, the result is very fast. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Gizem and Musa, to talk, uh, talking about Playwright, I'm sure our viewers also understood it. Uh, before we move on to the what, what is coming with ABP version 7.0, I would like to underline that we will have a giveaway campaign for the JetBrains.Ultimate. So if you have a question, you don't need to wait for the Q&A session. You can ask your questions right away and then we will answer them in the q a session right now Heidi will share a preview of upcoming avp platform version 7.0 release and mention some bullet points about what to expect from the avp platform 7.0 okay thank you again uh, first of all, I want to thank to Musa and uh, Gizem. They have prepared a lot uh, for this session. Uh, UI testing is very important for us. Uh, you know that we are creating frame, a framework and when you upgrade uh, to a new version, you don't uh, expect uh, to have errors. Uh, so we have automated tests like unit and integration tests everywhere in the framework and, uh, the, mod and the modules. And uh, we are especially using uh, Playwright to uh, test our startup templates after every, uh, before and after every release. Uh, you know that ABP supports multiple uh, UI and database versions like uh, Blazor, Angular, MEC, even Blazor for Blazor WebAssembly, Blazor Server. Uh, we have uh, different UI teams, different. Uh, architectural options like tired option, uh, like separate authentication server. And there are a lot of options. Testing all of them manually, not even testing, but creating a new project uh, with every uh, combination is very hard and time consuming. 
Uh, we are doing it manually, actually. Still, we are doing it manually because it's also needed. But we have uh, almost automated uh, all this kind of stuff. And uh, while we have some problems in some cases, still, we are learning Playwright and uh, doing our best. Uh, in next versions, we are expecting less error, less bugs with the help of this uh, UI testing system. So we uh, suggest to everyone to uh, use uh, this kind of UI testing systems because uh, manual testing is really hard uh, for a large application. Okay, uh, again, thank you, uh, Gizem and Musa. Uh, now in this part of this talk, I want to mention about uh, the ABP 7.0. You know that we are still trying to uh, stabilize uh, the 6.0 ABP. Uh, it will be released in the uh, next week. We have found uh, many bugs and we have fixed them all uh, by the help of Gizem and this OUI test also. Uh, so uh, while the, the team uh, was uh, trying to st stabilize the uh, 6.0, uh, some of our team members are, were working on ABP7, uh, including me. Uh, so, uh, with the ABP7, we will have uh, really good features, uh, and I want to mention some of uh, the exciting news here. Uh, first of all, we will be upgrading to .NET 7, obviously, uh, because we will uh, release this uh, ABP7 in the uh, November, in the middle of November, just after uh, Microsoft uh, released the uh, .NET 7. Uh, we have implemented Dapper integration, which was one of the most uh, requested features for the ABP uh, microservice development uh, approaches. Uh, I will mention uh, some details about the Dapper integration in my next slides. Uh, we have introduced an integration service concept. I will also introduce it here. Uh, we have implemented some dynamic feature permission and localization system uh, to make possible to uh, implement some uh, advanced uh, scenarios for microservice development. So let's uh, start with uh, Dapper integration. Uh, you know, Dapper has some built, uh, built in building blocks. Uh, one of the building blocks is service invocation. Is used for inter microservice communication is a micro in a microservice system. ABP has also uh, a system uh, called dynamic or static C# -sharp API client proxies, which makes possible to easily consume your services from another service. So these uh, features um, are matching actually, and we have integrated uh, these uh, features together. So when you create ABP's dynamic or static C# -sharp API client proxies your request uh, goes through to service and location building block of Dapper. I will uh, show uh, with a diagram in a few minutes. Also publish and subscribe is another building block, block of Dapper and we have integrated with ABP's di distributed event bus integration system. And also we have integrated with ABP's Dapper, uh, ABP's distributed lock system with Dapper's. So, uh, we have already documented uh, the Dapper integration. We typically write the documentation after uh, stable releases, uh, been, I know, but this time the document is already ready. So you can even try um, with Dapper, uh, with using nightly preview ABP packets, if you want to try it now, uh, because it's documented. But uh, you can also wait for, uh, we, we will probably uh, release an uh, ABP7 beta 1 before the release candidate this time, because this is a long milestone. Anyway, uh, let's start with uh, dynamic c -sharp client proxy integration. You know, ABP uh, with ABP, we, if we have a server application uh, and have an application service, for example, uh, performing some database operation, returning some data anyway. Uh, this is an uh, application service, it's a plain class. Uh, with ABP, you know, we can easily expose this application service as a REST API by conventions. Uh, th that's one point, but not related to here. Uh, if you want to consume this uh, application service from a, another .NET application, 
like a uh, consuming consuming a controller from a micro another microservice we can directly inject the uh, application service interface and call its methods just like local methods uh, this is possible through ABP's C Sharp Dynamic Client Proxy System. ABP handles all for you, uh, makes REST API calls under the hood, uh, handles authentication, JSON serialization, exception handling, uh, localization, multi-tenancy, retry logic, and a lot of more uh, for you. You just uh, call uh, application service methods from your client application. Now, uh, it's also possible to perform this REST API call throughout the Dapper sidecar. When you do that, you can take advantage of Dapper and you can use its service discovery features, tracing features, observability, like uh, you can collect metrics. Uh, you can use its security features like authorization between microservices. It also has some intercepting uh, related features with ABP frameworks uh, features like it also provides a retry uh, and so on. Uh, so it's now possible to use this architecture with Dapper integrated. Uh, ABP also has a distributed event pass as you know and uh, it provides uh, many features for you like uh, outbox and in inbox patterns was one of the major features we have added here to provide transactional uh, event publishing. Uh, and ABP does a lot uh, for you, like retrying, reconnecting to message broker, serialization, exception handling, and a lot of more. Now we can add Dapper sidecar between uh, the ABP's event bus system uh, and uh, to your uh, message broker. Uh, Dapper ABP also supports RabbitMQ, Kafka, uh, Rebus, uh, Azure uh, Event Pass, Azure Service Pass, and uh, more. With Dapper, you, you can uh, even connect uh, much more providers. So uh, you can just configure your, your Dapper sidecar, and it works perfectly with ABP. And also, you can take advantage of ABP's outbox and in inbox patterns. It's, it's not provided by Dapper by default. Uh, integration services is uh, one of the concepts coming with ABP 7.0. It's actually a, a simple uh, concept. When you put an integration service attribute on top of your application service, it becomes an integration service. There are some min minor but important differences between integration services and regular application services. Uh, first difference is uh, the default API URL is now integration API instead of API uh, when you expose your application service as REST API. This difference is important because, uh, for example, you may want to create an integration service to communicate between your microservices, uh, but you don't want to expose this uh, endpoint to end users, to uh, client applications out of your API gateway or out of your network. With the separation, you can uh, easily block requests coming to your integration API or simply uh, only allow to API prefix uh, from the uh, passing through from the API gateway. Uh, in that way, you can uh, remove authorization between your microservice calls. Or for example, you may disable audit logging, which is already disabled by default for uh, integration services because uh, audit uh, is used to track users normally, but it, it can be enabled. All of other systems of application services like unit of work, validation, and more is already working with the integration services as well. Uh, as I said, we, we uh, worked a lot for uh, implementing some microservice related scenarios. Uh, you know, in ABP framework, uh, we are defining permissions in, in our application code. That means uh, permission names and uh, permission metadata is hard-coded in your application and it's available in your process. When you want to uh, check your a permission, you can use authorized attribute or you can use authorization service. 
And finally, we have uh, the ABP frameworks uh, identity module and permission management module provides a uh, nice user interface to manage your permissions from uh, an administration side. So this is how ABP's uh, standard uh, permissions were working until now. Now, uh, try uh, think about a scenario like uh, you have a microservice with uh, defining per some permissions A and B, and you have another microservice the, this is uh, defining another permissions uh, and saving the permissions in the same permission uh, management database. Previously, we haven't uh, we haven't uh, storing permission definitions or permission names in the database. We were only storing permission grants. That means if you grant a permission to a role, it's stored. This information is stored, but the permission itself is not saved in the database. Uh, now. Uh, it's it will be saved in the database. So uh, if you have a permission management microservice that's used to manage your permissions in the user interface, this permission management microservice with preview scenario doesn't have any information about the permission A, B, C, D, and E because they are defined in another process, in another application, and the permission management microservice has no information about these permissions. So now we have added permission groups and permission tables in the database and uh, all microservices are uh, writing their own permissions to database in the application startup uh, and the permission management microservice can uh, use these permission definitions uh, from database and you can manage uh, all the permission in your system. Uh, from a single uh, application user interface. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, I have introduced a few important features coming with the next version. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. So now we will move on to the Q&A session. During this session, we have noted the people who have asked questions. So. After the Q&A session, we will announce the winners. In the meantime, you can still ask your questions and be involved in the uh, giveaway campaign. Right now, we are with Halil and Alper to answer the questions. Thank you. I, I can highlight. Uh, I, I can, can ask the, the first one. The screen. Let's start with the first one. I can yeah, answer you. this question. Um, actually, we are always uh, suggesting start by monolith, not before and after. Uh, this is not our suggestions. It's suggested by um, experienced uh, microservice guys like Martin Fowler and much more. So uh, this decision hasn't changed. However, there are some cases that you can directly start with microservice. If you're, uh, if you're rebuilding a system uh, with uh, renewing a system uh, with modern technologies, and you have excellent knowledge about your business, you can just start with microservices. But this is not technical. This is a business decision. That means ABP with ABP, you can start with microservice in the first day. No problem. Let's start uh, continue with the next question. Yes. So we don't have UGS support right now, and it's not planned to be an implementation of UGS or other ones. Uh, will ABP 6.0 will be updated to have the latest Blazorize? I know Blazorize is releasing uh, frequently new versions, but we haven't implemented the latest release uh, in 6.0. Uh, maybe seven in 7.0, we will update the Blazorize libraries. I suppose uh, Ant applications can upgrade to that version if it hasn't any breaking change. It shouldn't yeah. have breaking change because it's just minor version upgrade. So yes. uh, you can upgrade in your applications, but uh, the startup templates may come with the previous version. It's not so important. Are there any plans to directly support Azure Active Directory B2C as an identity provider in ABP framework? Let, can so, I answer that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, Actually, uh, yeah, is if you are having difficulties 
yeah because it's difficult uh, maybe <laughs> because yeah. uh, it's not related to abp actually it's difficult in its own we are uh, using open id protocol uh, and yeah anyway abp network. supports abp is a standard uh, .net application actually you can connect to any provider including azure and so on there are some customers we know that they are using azure active directory ABP provides some uh, built-in solutions for LDAP integration uh, and OpenID Connect integration uh, configuration. But that's possible. Uh, but uh, we don't know uh, if we can provide a startup template option for Azure uh, Active Directory. It's not planned. Um... Is in the automatic calling of API endpoint by referring to service supposed to configure a trial policy? Uh, yes, actually, uh, I uh, suppose the startup template already configured to try three times with waiting, uh, but uh, you can easily do that uh, with following the documentation and using the poly library, for example, by default. Um, Corey has a question, I think. Okay, I'm let's, sure. let's go. Uh, can... Yeah, so uh, another uh, community member, Bart Van Huey, has uh, a uh, repository about ABP frameworks, uh, Azure DevOps integration. You can check this uh, website. He also created a step-by-step -step website with ABP framework. This is uh, a Blazor website explains how to integrate uh, your project uh, with a Azure DevOps. It's coming uh, just, okay, we can, I think it's loading the assets as. I think it's a free tire Azure and it's very slow. And very slow. Uh, anyway, uh, there are some articles uh, you can check and search from a ABP community uh, website. Uh, the next one is uh, Playwright is part of Node.js. Actually, we cannot say like that, as I know. Uh, Playwright is an independent tool. Yes, it works with Node.js. Uh, it works on top of Node.js when you want to uh, run the tests. Uh, but it's not a part of uh, standard Node.js distribution. It's, ex it's an external tool uh, created by Microsoft, Microsoft. And it's actually platform and language independent. That means... If you, you can also test .NET applications, Java applications. You can write your tests in C Sharp, Java, and so on. Uh, module store is one of the most asked questions. Yes. So uh, people have their custom modules uh, that uh, implement some business logic, and they want to share with the community. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, we are providing official modules with the ABP commercial plan. Uh, we have more than 15 modules, as I remember. Uh, they are uh, built with ABP standards uh, and best practices. We have already documented best practice guide for module development. Uh, but for an official module store, I think we should wait for uh, a little bit more. We have plans, but uh, we haven't done it yet. Um, Okay, I switch to ASP.NET Zero question. So, this Playwright integration isn't sticked with ABP framework. You can use any web platform. Yeah, like it's already implemented, I, I guess. And it is implemented in 10, uh, version 10.4.0. That means, Musa, uh, is it coming pre integrated with our solution with ASP.NET Zero? Yes, yes. That, so, that's very cool. Um, so can, they can they can uh, directly run or pre-build tests and uh, they yes. can uh, build their own. That's yes, cool. They can run test tests and they have uh, it has a lot of tests tests. It's already yes, very good. Very good. Uh, you can test everything in a short answer, uh, including third party components and everything. You can test uh, anything you can see on, on the web uh, browser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good this question, is, Musa. Uh, this is question. for you. Oh. 
So, do they need to every time login? Uh, actually, they don't need to uh, login every time. They can write before all and, and before all tests, they can login and then all the tests will be uh, run without logging again. Uh, they can just uh, use a given cookie or given token or whatever they use and use it uh, with the other requests. Okay, uh, should we put passwords into the script? Actually, it's not recommended. Uh, yeah, it's obviously not. Uh, you can oh. use environment. Uh, we also yeah, use yeah. environments and I can also share my screen uh, to show it quickly uh, in ASP.NET Zero and in ABP framework, we use environment and we get uh, username and password from environment volume mm -hmm. and use it in tests. It's anyway, the testing platform should have not uh, important yes. passwords inside. I think uh, yeah. he's asking because he is testing some live environment, maybe. Yeah, it is not recommended. Yeah, I, I believe that not only uh, from environment variables, it can also get uh, this information from a secret source. Yeah. So, yeah, you're it's, right. It's, it's, you it's just code. It's just uh, TypeScript code. You can do everything. Yes. Um, Alper has Perfection. already answered this yes. question. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, we are uh, using Je um, Jenkins, I, I suppose, right, Gizem? Yes, we, we start uh, the tests with Jenkins, so Jenkins is yeah. the manager. GitHub action is possible, but we are using Jenkins to run uh, tests and uh, create pull requests uh, for screenshot change. Uh, as Musa explained, uh, we use C sharp with type playwright when we run or tests locally, they pass, but in Azure pipelines, they fail. Is there a particular reason for that? I don't know. It's a very custom question. Yeah, it's very uh, environment specific. Uh, is there a plan? Okay, this is not related to UI test, but Leptonix customizations. I can share my screen for Leptonix. I know uh, you are excited with Leptonix news and we are writing its documents as well in the parallel sessions. And uh, as you know, there is Leptonix Lite and Leptonix itself. Leptonix Lite is the open source version. Uh, we, we are writing the rich document about customization, but now it's not uh, so, so much rich. And for the commercial side, you can go to UI Thames Lepton and customizing Lepton team. And there are different variants that you can use for your customization. You can check this document. Okay, next question about, uh, if you haven't already answered, do we have an updated release date for uh, 6.0 final and the target date for uh, 7.0? I suppose we have answered that question, but uh, to repeat it, uh, the uh, 6.0 uh, was planned for this week actually, but um, we have released the last uh, release candidate in this week. So it will probably, if we don't have a serious trouble, we will release it in the next week, uh, the 6.0 final. For the 7.0, uh, we will release it just after Microsoft release uh, .NET 7. So it's in the middle of November. Uh, it will be uh, release candidate 7.0 uh, release candidate. And uh, we will probably uh, release the stable 7 uh, version uh, in December. Uh, it's a so similar I, question. I yeah, think. I have already uh, explained. Uh, he is asking if your uh, playwright can do performance testing. So check out this uh, load testing with playwright. A guy from community member, uh, he has written an article and he shows how to make uh, performance testing, load testing with pl playwright. And also there is other uh, article. This is also uh, making performance tests with playwright. 
you can check these documents uh, after the session. You can uh, get the links from YouTube video. Uh, this question may come to Musa. Playwright recommends not to use heart weights. Uh, what to use instead? Uh, for example, uh, drop down button has three options. I go select an option, but it's not selected. Then test fails. What to do here? Do you have an idea here? Actually, we we already we already have uh, this. Uh, we had this error because of the uh, animations in our uh, pages. Uh, we disabled them, and when we click something, it opens it directly without animation, and they may help them. And they may also need to wait, for example, just for a second, and that may help too. I suppose if we if the uh, action performs an uh, Ajax request or a page refresh, it automatically waits without uh, doing anything. Yeah, you But can uh, wait for response. Uh, it has a built-in wait or wait for response uh, method, and you can use it. Okay, I'm going to show you some uh, events. As you see, there are different uh, events that you can catch, like frame attach, file choose, uh, a download starts ends, request start end, and there are many uh, states that you can handle in your uh, that you can stick it to. So I think this is answered by this uh, web page. Okay, a question from Roman Biliak. Uh, the number of integrations with other framework increases with each version upgrading to .NET uh, to 7 will update all integrations. Okay, uh, he asks for uh, how we manage all uh, this. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to manage actually. Uh, so we are trying to keep the integrations minimal. And uh, the uh, main secret is we are integrating everything with uh, different package integration packets so in in this way uh, even if we cannot upgrade an uh, package an integration package we can uh, release all others one time we have had this problem uh, as i remember it was related to oracle integration oracle devart integration no no official oracle integration was not released for dotnet 6 or dotnet 5 i don't remember the exact version And we couldn't be able to release that version. So we said that whenever they release the official um, version with .NET 5, we will release that package. And we continue and uh, publish it other ABP packages. Uh, so th this is the main point we are following. But uh, it has already some risks. We are trying to manage all, all these <laughs> risks. Also, a question was asked about uh, updating Blazorize libraries. Yeah, we know there is uh, the newest one, but uh, it's not easy to update the uh, library to the latest version because uh, there may be some breaking change. Uh, your existing project may fail. That's why um, it's uh, uh, we are handling all the integrations very carefully. Okay, uh, this is a good question. Uh... Roberto says that uh, I should start with a new project. I waited for version 6 to avoid starting with an old version. But the version 7 uh, will be out soon. Which one do you recommend to start with? I definitely recommend to start with version 6 now because the version 7 will not uh, bring uh, uh, bring uh, breaking change. Major, yeah. Actually. Yeah, it, it won't have uh, any major breaking change, but version 6 has because we have migrated to OpenIDD and we, ha we are also switched to uh, LaptonX and we have made uh, a lot of uh, important changes. But uh, with version 7, uh, we will have less change, more feature. So you so, can uh, start with 6 and uh, easily upgrade to 7. Also, if you wait for 7, there will be talking about that uh, ABP 8 and you will be in a loop to wait until the end. Uh, any idea when you might implement resource-based permissions? Okay, good question. Uh, it's on our roadmap. Actually, resource-based authorization is a, 
uh, well-documented features in ASP.NET course documentation. If you check ASP.NET core documentation, you will see that Microsoft has documented in detail. So it's possible to use it today. However, uh, Microsoft's uh, documentation doesn't uh, mention about uh, scalability problems, must, doesn't mention about potential uh, design issues with that, that approach because it's, it's a hard problem, uh, especially when to uh, need to filter your resources based on permissions. It gets complicated and requires some uh, really uh, integrated solutions to your uh, query. Uh, I don't want to go much details because uh, it may uh, come complicated to, to uh, everyone, but it's on our roadmap. Uh, but if we uh, provide uh, a value, we may in implement it. Otherwise, uh, you can use uh, just like Microsoft documented or however you uh, need in your application. Paul, yes. Uh, a the, the, the reason that we are late uh, to release the stable version is Angular 4, 14 because uh, we tried to integrate it with this version and it, the ABP 6 is a big uh, change. That's why we also implemented Angular 14 uh, integration. We had to test a lot for this change. Uh, that's why we waited, yeah. Uh, will Lepton X be used in ABP7? No, uh, in ABP6, which will be released probably in the next week, uh, Lepton X will be uh, used. And Lepton X will become 1.0 stable in the next week. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, we have the release date answered. again. Yeah, answered in the November uh, 4 7. Uh, we haven't uh, made a benchmark test for this. You can maybe check uh, and find in Dapper's documentation. Uh, no, we 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 haven't implemented any webhook system for ABP uh, framework yet. We had implemented for ASP.NET Zero before, but we haven't done it. Uh, are there any ABP suite improvements planned? Yes, definitely. We In every release, we are adding improvements, making enhancement in the ABP suite. This version will also uh, have uh, this six, uh, version six will have new uh, suite features. And also in the seven, we have uh, improvements. Uh, we are also planning some other tools for ABP commercial customers, but it's very early and secret for now. We will uh, maybe announce in the end of this year. Uh, okay. When you still consider it took a lot of time. It's hard to answer this question now. Um, I think questions are over. Uh, and yeah. uh, we can. Uh, yeah, we can end this session. It's uh, already over uh, time. Yeah, we have exceeded it a little bit. And we last also question. Uh, last question uh, coming for Leptonics supports RTL in the upcoming version. Do you know Alper? Yes, uh, we are. We support RTL in the in the re releasing version. ABP six point okay. oh will have RTL support. Sorry, Bige, you can continue. It's all right. We had the last minute questions. So thank you all for participating in this episode of ABP Community Talks, especially to our speakers and our sponsor, uh, JetBrains. Now we're me moving on to the Winners of that ultimate, you can see the names in the below, but to say their names out loud, I will uh, say David Hurtado, Hurtado Daryl Olson, and Scott Moody. If you can contact us at marketing at volosoft.com with I am the winner of that ultimate in the subject line, we would be happy to deliver your 100% coupon codes. 
So see you later in the next AVP community talks. Thank you so much for attending and bearing with us for 20 more minutes. Bye bye. Everyone. Bye bye. See you in the next session. Bye bye. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.